con un beso en tu mejilla Deja que tu vida crezca en la conciencia del mañana que ha llegado con el día nuestra hora Before the coming of the white man, many great Indian cultures flourished in the New World. Perhaps the greatest of these was that of the Incas. From the heart of their empire in modern-day Peru, the Incas ruled an advanced civilization of perhaps six million people in an area that stretched for 2,500 miles along the mountainous western edge of South America. But at the height of its glory, the Inca civilization came to an abrupt end with the arrival of the Spanish conquistadors in 1532. Even today, we have not learned all the secrets of the civilization that the Spaniards destroyed. Explorer and author David Hatcher Childress has studied the Incas extensively. Let's join him in Peruvian archaeologist Fernando Bueno at the ancient Inca fortress of Sacsayhuaman overlooking Cusco to begin a journey through this fabled land in search of the lost cities of the Incas. Here we have what are massive, huge blocks uh, weighing, oh, easily 100,000 pounds molded together like this. With, I mean, there's just, you can't even get a knife in these cracks coming through these massive blocks. Now, what is also strange here are these uh, these indentations here under underneath, kind of cupped areas. Uh, why the, there are these indentations, no one knows. Um, some people believe it has something to do with the construction. Um, possibly, in one theory, that these giant blocks were somehow incredibly molded together, or maybe even cast, then... Uh, Perhaps uh, these indentations have something to do with um, the way the, the, the blocks were molded or something. Uh, anyway, there's, so far there's no real answer uh, into why there are these, uh, these molds. And on some other rocks you'll see um, knobs and things like that that would seem to correspond maybe to a, a notch. It's strange and mysterious. This is the largest stone at Sacsayhuaman. It's estimated that this massive rock weighs about 300 tons, which is about 600,000 pounds. Somehow, this rock was moved into place from quarries uh, miles from here up the mountains. And then the other massive blocks perfectly cut and fitted to fit in with this gigantic block. About as large as it can be found anywhere. How this was done, how these blocks were moved and fitted together, has never been answered and remains a mystery today. One of the fabulous legends of Peru is of a fantastic labyrinth of tunnels that goes through the Andes. It's been said that in these tunnels, some of the fast treasure of the Incas is kept. This is the entrance to one of those tunnels here at Sacsayhuaman Fortress. The, uh, it goes only for a few hundred feet, and then it is blocked off. In 1923, an expedition from the University of Lima came to Cusco and entered one of the tunnels here. They advanced towards the coast in a tunnel that was eight feet high, trapezoidal in shape, and kept contact as much as they could with another team here located at the entrance of the tunnel. But after 12 days, contact with the entrance of the tunnel was lost, and only one of the explorers returned. He was starving, and he told 
incredible tales of dangers and rooms and gold. His tales were so incredible, he was declared mad by his companions. And to keep other people from going into the tunnels, the entrance was dynamited. And these are only some of the fantastic, incredible tales of uh, this strange tunnel system through the Andes. Do you think, Fernando, that some of the treasure of the Coricancha is hidden in these tunnels here? It uh, could be. According to the legend, these tunnels communicate uh, a, a lot of peop uh, cities in the Inca Empire. Quito and Cusco were uh, communicating by these tunnels. It is one of the fantastic legends that yeah. there was a tunnel from Quito to here to Cusco and even to the coast and farther south to Chile. Possibly yeah. to Paititi? Of course, yes. There is a story of a, a lost student of the University of Cusco who went in, into this tunnel and uh, he lives in the Coricancha uh, temple in Cusco, carrying with him one, uh, one um, piece of gold. And after to die, he offered to the Virgin in the temple of Coricancha. That story is very known in the Cusco still. Right, of, uh, he, for many days he wandered inside the tunnels and then he came out. There were uh, three students who goes into the tunnel, but only one came out alive. <laughs> June 24th in Cusco, Peru. This is the annual Festival of the Sun. Used to be on June 21st, but then the Spanish moved it to June 24th. So this was then the summer solstice. And here was the, is the crowning of the Inca king. For the Incas, this was the big festival of the year. And people from all over the Inca empire would come here to Cusco to celebrate the Festival of the Sun. of America by Christopher Columbus opened the new world to Spanish exploration. After the conquest of Mexico by Cortes, the Spanish began to move south. Fired by a missionary zeal and an insatiable lust for gold, a group of Spanish soldiers led by Francisco Pizarro launched a series of expeditions southward along the western coast of South America. 
Landing in 1532 with a small but determined band of conquistadors, Pizarro began to march inland through high mountain passes to the Inca resort city of Cajamarca. Here in this northern Peruvian city, the Spaniards had learned that the Inca king Atahualpa was to be found. The conquest of the Incas is perhaps one of the strangest and most bizarre episodes in all of history. 160 gold-crazed conquistadors conquered a, an empire of millions of people with a huge army. How did they do it? The, uh, the 160 conquistadors, led by Francisco Pizarro, left Panama and landed on the north coast of Peru in 1531. From there, they marched inland with their horses, which the Incas had never seen before. Also, there was a fulfilling of a strange prophecy, that of Viracocha and the men who had come with beards, strange white men. And here they were, marching on Cajamarca. And it was there that they were fortunate to find the Inca ruler Atahualpa, who was bathing in hot springs there. The Inca Empire had just come out of a long civil war between two brothers, Huascar in Quito and Atahualpa in Cusco. Atahualpa had, was the winner. And as he was bathing in the pools, the, the Spaniards in the town hatched an extremely bold plan to capture the Inca Atahualpa. Here, the next day, as, after meeting him with his vast army of hundreds of thousands of soldiers, they suddenly seized the Inca and held him captive. Not one of his soldiers raised a spear to protect the Inca, and he was now a captive of the Spanish. They then decided to ransom him for a room full of gold as high as Pizarro could reach. Then, several of the conquistadors went back with some of Atahualpa's officers to Cusco, where they saw the fantastic treasure in the Temple of the Sun life-size animals and plants made of gold, a huge gold sun disk, gold mummies of the ancient Inca kings, an incredible treasure. A room full of gold was then filled in Cajamarca in order to free their beloved Inca king Atahualpa. However, the ruthless Spanish, after the ransom had been paid, executed Atahualpa and then marched on Cusco to seize the Inca Empire, which was now without a ruler. There they installed their own puppet Inca, and so effectively began Spanish rule in Peru. When the Spaniards first came to the ancient Inca capital of Cusco in 1532, they found this massive fortress of Sacsayhuaman. At that time, uh, the Inca elite fled to a hidden city north of Cusco named Paititi. The name in the Inca language uh, means the very center of the universe. It's supposed that in that treasure is the golden disk of Coricancha and 14 statues of gold in the natural size of a man. These statues were taken from the Temple of the Sun, the Cori Concha in Cusco, but before the Spaniards could enter the city, were removed first to Choquicancha, a city uh, to the north of here, and then to Paititi. Yes, from the scientific point of view, we suppose that Paititi is the most important archaeological remain in America because of the pre-Inca, Inca, post-imperial Inca and contemporaneous versions about the existence of this lost city. After the arrival of the conquistadors, much of the Inca royalty fled from Cusco, along with the sacred golden sun disk and the 14 gold mummies of the previous Inca kings, to what is believed to be a series of lost cities in the high jungle-covered mountains northeast of Cusco. One of these cities, close to Cusco, was discovered in 1911 by American explorer Hiram Bingham. It is called Machu Picchu. Another American explorer, Gene Savoy, discovered the lost city of Vilcabamba in 1965. 
Now, Childress and Bueno are leading another group of explorers in search of the final refuge of the Incas, which they believe still exists in the high jungles of eastern Peru. Your mother, just some salt, some salt, salt. No, but I have a spoonful from my house. Okay, we have a couple of spoons now. Ah, yeah. Real, real explorer. Yeah. El juega de verdad. path of the retreating Incas, the expedition comes to the Urumbamba River in the ancient fortress city of Ollantaytambo. These are the massive walls of Ollantaytambo. Some of them five, maybe even ten tons, perfectly fitted together, covered with lichen. Many theorists now believe that Sacsayhuaman and Ollantaytambo and other cities were not built by the Incas, but by some pre-Inca civilization who existed, well, maybe five or even 6,000 years ago. Let's see the more evidence. Here you see the ruins, the massive sun temple on the top of Ollantaytambo. Blocks weighing 50 tons, 100 tons, and the largest, weighing 200 tons, lay scattered about me. Now it seems as if it was actually like this during the Inca times, just as we see it here today. Massive rocks. The Incas themselves have built platforms and created uh, benches out of fallen blocks. Only a massive earthquake could have done something like this. And here, most importantly, we see key cuts carved into the rock, 
where two copper or iron or silver clamps clamp two stones together. This is not known to be used by the Incas, but rather is common in Tiwananko and Pumapunku. These cultures are admittedly pre-Inca. This is where the Incas, retreating from Cuzco, actually defeated the Spaniards. From here, after regrouping, the Inca army then split into two different areas. One went south down the Urubamba to the new military headquarters of Vilcabamba. The rest of the Incas went to Choque Concha to the east over these high passes and with the vast treasure of the Incas from the Cora Concha, the Sun Temple of the Incas. They fled over these mountains to secret cities and ultimately to Haiti. The expedition's last contact with civilization will be Ame Bamba, a small mountain village that survives by growing coffee, tea, and coca. No tourist has ever been this way, and the group's arrival causes a local sensation. Uh, Nueva York. Where are we going? We went to the Well, we're on the trail to an Antinarco now, and we found this old man here who lives, he's been living here for 32 years. And I think he knows something about an Antinarco. What does he say, David? is he saying that the the ruins at Yanantin Arcon are, are bigger than Machu Picchu? Yes, yes. He said this than bigger than Machu Picchu. It's like a big, big place, uh, land, you know, very flat. Machu Picchu So there is some Inca mines. There are some silver mines, silver, right? Silver mines. Even there's some, even there's some legend about this place. Last year he went there. Mm. He said that it's the Inca, the Inca people that when the Spanish arrived to, to Peru, they, they, they know about this, uh, the Spanish. So. They was escaping to this place, to the jungle, to the Paititi maybe. Right, so right. One of these places, you know, Antinorco was one of the, the ruins that they built. So they was mm, making some trials, you know, through the maybe the Paititi. Right, on the way to Paititi. Yeah. So what do we have here? Table. So Machu Picchu is, has to connect, you know, with this place. Right, the trail then is coming from Machu Picchu up over the mountains to Yanantin Orco, where according to this man who's telling David and Quechua, are silver mines and ruins bigger than Machu Picchu, three days from here. So that's the lost city of Yanantin Orco, supposedly on this mountain here, just to the left. The Black Martin Mountain at the very back. The tip just covered in clouds. Is there a lost city bigger than Machu Picchu on top of that mountain? A number of the locals here have told us exactly that. In our attempted expedition, we came up over these hills here on the left, the green ones, up to the top of that one, and then over a number of successive ridges covered with Alto Selva, the high jungle, thick bush. We ran to the end of the trail, and we also ran out of water on the way. Uh, but there was indications of an Inca road along that part 
of the, uh, the high slopes. We also discovered Inca tombs, circular Inca buildings, and evidence of an ancient Inca trail heading farther into the mountains. Over that pass is Machu Picchu. We think before we get to it, we'll find the lost city of Yunnan Norco. <laughs>